Hello and welcome back to our locking automatic chicken coop door. In today's video, we're going to start off by installing the motor that's going to be uh, driving this cable to open the door. So let's get started. So I've got the leftover scrap piece of the board that we used to cut out um, most of our chicken coop sides and the locking mechanism. And we're going to be recycling this piece. Now I'm going to be using a uh, one and a half bit here, quite large. And this is going to be used to uh, make the hole for the motor to sit in. Uh, so let's just go ahead and put a hole in here. Now it's popped through the back side, which means I can come around here and hit the other side of it. Got it. Not the best looking hole, but that may actually come to our advantage. Now with this hole, I want to cut this board right down the middle of that hole. Now, I need to make this piece right here. Now with these two pieces here, we need to drill all the way through here and all the way through here with a bit long enough to, uh, or wide enough to get those zip ties through. And on these back holes, we're only going to go in about that far. So we're going to use some tape um, to get that done here in just a second. But So for now, I'm going to go all the way through the top here. Okay, nice. So same thing here. A eh, little off, not bad. Okay, so now it's important that we only go in uh, a certain distance here. And to keep that, uh, I'm gonna put some tape where I must stop on this bit. That way we don't go too far in. Okay, there's the first one. One more. Alright, there we go. Now, these screws that we used previously have to fit into this piece. And so, I'm once again going to mark off where this tape is and move up to the next size bit because we want to uh, bring this screw into that point. So, once again, we're going to use this to there. So let's do that real quick. The reason I used the smaller bit first is because this is kind of delicate and you don't want to be ripping through here too hard. So that will allow us to screw this all the way in there. I have these two pieces here and that's going to be what uh, holds the motor in place with these uh, zip ties. But there's another thing we have to consider and that is what goes on the shaft of this motor. So my thoughts are we're going to use that last piece of scrap wood that we had and uh, I've got a dowel. So my thought process is cut out two holes with this, uh, I believe it's two and an eighth hole saw and then uh, take another bit, drill a hole through that that's the size of this. So that way we've got a spool with two ends on it. Then I'll drill a hole through here and glue that into here. So that's the plan. Let's give it a try. See how well this hole saw works. Whew. All right. See what we got? That's pretty smooth. So put this on here. I think that'll be a pretty good swivel, a uh, spool ending. So I'll make one more of those real quick. This dowel is a 7 8 so that's the bit that I have here. So I'm just gonna see if I can get this to uh, drill down the center. Whew. 
kind of ugly, <clears throat> but I think it worked. Let's give it a try. Yeah, kind of split through the back side here, but okay. And nice fit. All right, so I'll drill the hole in the other one of these, and then we'll put some glue on here. Now I've got a bit a little bit smaller than the shaft of our motor. I'm going to get this drilled in here. I flipped the dowel around here. I'm going to put another hole in this side. And this is going to be a place where we can put a screw. And that is going to act as the uh, support for the other side of this spool. I've got some Gorilla Glue here. And I'm just going to put these new circles here onto this piece. So I think what I'm going to do is just dab some of this on here. Yeah. I know I may not be using this glue. <laughs> this is in my grandfather's uh, tools and apparently it is cured inside the bottle. <laughs> Let's use some wood glue. So I got this wood glue. Let's see if it does better than that uh, cured glue. So we'll spread that around. Yeah, I may have to use a little bit more of this. That's all right. This stuff doesn't expand like that Gorilla Glue does. All right. Guess that looks pretty good. Now do the other one real quick. That's one nice looking homemade spool. If your uh, chicken door doesn't turn out nice, you can always use this for sewing. <laughs> All right, so now that's gonna be drying for the next 24 hours. So let's move on to mounting our motor, or at least getting the, uh, the supports up. So we have our two motor mounting pieces. Now I want to make sure that this uh, top hole here is open to allow for the uh, zip tie to fit through. So I'm just going to place this here, make sure it's fairly uh, straight up and down. Let's make sure our motor still fits properly in here. Right there is where we want it. Okay. Alright, we got those on there. See if that's going to work for our motor or if I have to move it any. Looks perfect to me. So now what I think I'm going to do is put a couple of little screws in here, uh, maybe pre-drill, to keep these two pieces sandwiched together. Now, using another piece of our scrap, I'm going to mark a place here on the shaft, or at least where the shaft connects with this board. And this is going to be a support for the other side of the spool. So I need to drill in here. And then we will uh, put some support screws in here. So this will uh, be uh, across from the motor here. We have to make it just a little bit bigger so that there's enough room for that to swivel around in. Now it's time to get the shaft of the motor glued into our spool. So I'm going to dab some glue in here and then just push this shaft into this spot here and that glue will hopefully get this thing locked down pretty tight. I let this sit for a couple of days and it seems to be quite strong. Whenever I turn this uh, spool I hear the motor uh, turning as well. So it's holding really nice. Now instead of using that um, bolt I decided to use this threaded uh, rod here and that's going to be for the support on uh, this back side. So uh, this will go in here and it'll just have a little extra support when this is uh, turning up. So let's go ahead and get our motor 
cinched down here. The motor here is just a little bit too wide for a single zip tie, so I'm going to have to be uh, doubling these up. But I think we're going to be all right here. So I pushed uh, those zip ties up there. I'm just going to cinch this one down here. That's pretty tight right there. So I'll put one more on the back side, and that'll give us two. And that should make that uh, a very strong connection there. Now, to support the motor, I've got this other block we made. I'm going to stick it on that threaded screw there. And center this up. Okay. And this should give us lots of support here. The last thing we have to do for the motor is put another eyelet in to uh, attach the rope to. So I'm going to just start a little hole here with my drill. Okay. So that's going to be where we start this eyelet. The thread or cable, whatever you want to call it here, will go through this and then as it spins, It'll uh, wrap it around. So, and we'll cut this down some because it's a little bit long right now. Well, that concludes the motor attachment part of our build. I'm really excited about that. Uh, when I first started, I didn't know exactly how I was going to build it. And I'm glad to see that it's uh, turned out well and seems to be pretty balanced. So, looking forward to giving it a test run. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth Johnson with Land the House, and I hope to see you in the next part. See you later. Bye.